Hey everyone, in today's video I am finally reviewing for you Crave Beauty skincare products. Crave Beauty started by a YouTuber here named Leah Yu. She does a lot of skincare and makeup related videos. Back in the day it was mostly just reviews and recommendations of products she's tried for her sensitive, acne prone, and oily skin. But in the past couple of years she switched gears and her content has become a lot more informative and educational when it comes to skincare, especially when it comes to the ingredient list. When she came out with Crave Beauty I have had a high interest since day one when she first First mentioned it. I've always liked her content and even her current videos have also been a part of helping me in figuring out what works for my skin as well. To me Crave Beauty seems to be the perfect combo of efficacious science-backed ingredients all the while including good plant extracts as well so it's combining kind of the best of both worlds of what I like in a skincare product. In today's video I'm reviewing three out of the four products she came out with. They are the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser, the Kale Lalu Yaha, and the Beat the Sun Sunscreen SPF 47 PA4+. Before we get into the review, I just want to make it clear that I did not purchase these products and they were not sent to me for PR purposes. I actually won an Instagram giveaway contest. Back in September 2018, Crave Beauty did have a contest on naming their future skincare book. I put down my suggestion. It was something that resonated with me and I felt like worked with their skincare mantra. Before I even knew it, my comment was actually the most liked and I was tagged in their Instagram stories as the winner. I'm really grateful that I got a chance to try out these products because some of you may know or already that Crave Beauty only ships to the US and South Korea. I am Canadian, I do not have access to these products, so I am very grateful that I'm getting a chance to use these products in my skincare routine. If it isn't clear already, it was an international giveaway. They just sent it to me to enjoy the products because I won the contest. I decided to review them myself because I do review a lot of skincare products and I figured one more review would still be helpful for some of you still interested in trying out these products. Now that that's out of the way, let's get right into the review. So Crave Beauty itself is all about about pressing reset in your skincare routine. In Korean skincare, we always hear about the 10 step skincare routine. Whereas in this approach with these products, it's just to listen to what your skin craves. I will be reviewing the first three products that came out in her line since then she did come out with Great Barrier Relief. And I'm pretty sure there's also a moisturizer along the way as well. Some quick facts about Crave Beauty. They are strictly a skincare line. They are vegan friendly, cruelty free. They are formulated without fragrance, essential oil, or colorants. They're all about pressing reset not only on your skincare routine, but from all the noise that we hear from the beauty industry. So they want to be a transparent company. They only want to make products that contribute to your skin's health. And they prioritize simplicity in their products while providing quality ingredients and care. I'm about to read an excerpt that's from their website and I find it really suits what their company is all about and the message that they're trying to send to any consumer interested in their products. Skincare should be easy. Skincare should be a stress-free zone. Skincare should be a supplement to our lifestyle. And most of all, skincare basics should be basic. It's time to press reset. I personally like how Crave Beauty actually just launches products based on what they specifically want to launch and what they want to formulate. The first two products were actually the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser and the Kale Lalu Yaha. They came out with a sunscreen and now they came out with an oil-based serum. So they're definitely taking their own type of steps to come out with a really good formulated product that suits their brand and what they find will be best for any of us interested in buying their products. The first product I'm gonna review is the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. So their claims for this is that it's an antioxidant cleanser that doesn't mess up your skin barrier. It lifts everything your skin doesn't want while leaving what it needs. Matcha and hemp seeds are here to boost the skin's intake of antioxidants and essential fatty acids, and this contains 40% matcha. For me, I personally love that this is in a base of Camellia Senesis leaf water, so green tea leaf water. And actually that the bulk of this product is green tea. I personally have benefited from using green tea water topically, and that'll be something I touch on later when I get to the pros and cons. For right now, in terms of my experience, I have been using this as my second cleanse every night pretty much since I got it. Um, I would say consistently it's been six months of me using this product, although I've been rotating these products in my skincare routine since I first received them. So I use this as a second cleanse there is no scent to this whatsoever and the texture is very interesting it's not the typical smooth clear jelly you usually see in a gel cleanser it's actually brown and chunky for me personally I found a dime to nickel size amount was very effective at cleansing both my face and neck from any makeup or SPF I was wearing that day I would massage this into my face 
for around a minute and while massaging it I definitely noticed my skin was softening a lot and looking very even and bright. By the time I finished cleansing my face definitely felt hydrated however I found that if I didn't act fast with following up with any humectant products like hyaluronic acid or any of my essences that my face would dry very fast. Even though the cleansing process was very effective and this didn't dry out my skin while cleansing I found that I had to really speed up my skincare routine to make sure I didn't get that squeaky clean feel. Overall since incorporating this into my skincare routine I found it's just been a great second cleanse. I've never had any problems with this other than the potential drying feeling I might get. Even on my days when I wear a full face of makeup I found this a really reliable cleanser to go to to make sure my face was cleansed effectively. Despite the drying feeling I could get from this cleanser overall I find it a really effective second cleanse and it's probably one of my favorite cleansers that I currently have in my skincare collection. So for the overall pros like I mentioned I love that this has 40% matcha in it. Back when I was working in aviation and was staying at hotels a lot I did like to pamper myself a little bit by doing some DIY skincare stuff. One of them was actually splashing my face with green tea water. I would just steep the tea bag for about five minutes and then continuously splash my face with it. From that simple DIY alone I noticed my skin was really soft, very even tone and my pores looked a little bit smaller. So I find with this one I actually pretty much get the same effect with it. So for the overall pros of the matcha hemp hydrating cleanser one is the 40% matcha in it. For 16 US dollars I find this is a pretty good size especially since you don't need to use a lot to effectively remove a full face of makeup. And for the one con my skin does dry a little bit too fast after I use its product even if it is still damp but like I said I can work with it. Next product I'm reviewing is their Kale Lalu Yaha. This is a 5.25% glycolic acid toner. The claims state that this is a skin resurfacing exfoliator that kicks your dead skin cells to the curb. It reveals youthful healthier skin while also feeding it delicious antioxidants from dark leafy greens such as kale, spinach, and parsley. And it says you'll kiss goodbye to the appearance of discoloration, sun damage, and fine lines with regular use. So I'm just looking at their ingredients list in front of me and the base of this is actually aloe water. As most of us know aloe is a very soothing ingredient so I'm really happy that they decided to include that in a chemical exfoliator. And they also included allantoin in this to help further soothe your skin from the chemical exfoliating process. For this when I first got it I was able to use this every other evening if not every evening but when I started using prescription strength different I kind of put this on the side for the first month and only used it once a week. Now I'm able to use this twice a week. When I first started using this I didn't notice any particular scent but I feel like after opening it a number of times there's definitely some type of sour smell that comes from it but it's not something that lingers on your skin it's literally from me like sniffing the cap. As you can see it is a watery texture but either way I do apply it with my hands. The only times I apply it with a cotton pad is when I feel particularly congested and I need to kind of rub it in a little bit more. And despite the watery consistency I'm really happy to tell you that it actually gives a nice moisturized finish. I believe I mentioned this in another video I can't really remember which one but I don't really like the pixie glow tonic because my skin feels very dry and tight after using it whereas with this one I do not get that effect at all. For instant results my face definitely looks smooth and even. For long term results I am not surprised that this has been helping with the texture I have on my cheeks. For me personally I've noticed with using glycolic acid and maybe lactic acid those two are the best AHAs when it comes to helping improve the texture of my skin. So if you are looking for a chemical exfoliant that would help with your texture I think you'd really like this one because of the 5.25% glycolic acid in it. For my final thoughts on the Kale Lalu Yaha, the pros is one, that this is in the base of aloe water. Two, obviously it improves my skin texture, especially with long-term use. Another pro is I don't find this too irritating for my skin. I personally have used 8 to 10% AHA products in the past, so 5.25% is definitely gentle for me. Even though I can go a higher percentage because I am using prescription strength retinoid, I am completely fine with the fact that this is only 5.25%. And for the last pro, I just mentioned this does not dry out my skin. I like that my skin is left normal and slightly moisturized after using this. If I have to say one con about the product it's just that it crystallizes at the cap otherwise it's really not a big deal. And I guess this is an in-between feel so it's not necessarily a pro or a con. Because this is only 5.25% some of you that are more experienced with the chemical exfoliators might find that this doesn't do anything as substantial as something like 8% or 10% would. But on the other end in the K-beauty market in general I've never seen a chemical exfoliator higher than 2%. Usually when a toner has salicylic acid or something like that in it it's at 0.5%. I think the only product I've seen with maybe 10% AHA is the makeup face cream like they're 
scar cream or something like that. But if you are looking for an effective chemical exfoliant to start with, that's not just 2%. I think you'd really enjoy this one because it is of higher strength. So if you are fairly new to chemical exfoliation and you wanna go higher from the 2% you typically find in the Asian beauty market, you might wanna check this one out. Last product for review is Beat the Sun Sunscreen. This is an SPF of 47, a PA of 4 plus. The US name is Beat the Shield and their UV filters are Juvenal A+, Tinasorb S, and Parcel SLX. The claims are it is a gentle antioxidant rich day fluid that protects your skin from harsh environmental stressors. It is a lightweight, non-white cast leaving formula charged with beetroot extract and antioxidants to fight against the free radicals so you don't turn beet red. I've actually never heard of beetroot in skincare products before, but according to their website, they say that it is an antioxidant rich vegetable and that it holds skin enhancing properties like preventing signs of aging, reducing pigmentation and blemishes and moisturizing. And even on the packaging, you could see it has allantoin in it for further soothing properties. And it also contains vitamin C, resveratrol, and EGCG as their antioxidants. So for using this product, as most of you should know already, it is the last step of my skincare routine before going into makeup. This has no scent and just exactly like Crave Beauty describes, it's like a condensed milk formula. I've mentioned this in my sunscreen Sunday videos, but for application, I personally apply 64% of a quarter teaspoon to my face area. For me, that was my rough estimate of what I need to get the required two milligrams per centimeter square amount for my face size in particular. While applying this product, I do notice my face feels really nice and refreshed. At first, it looks a little bit like it's gonna leave a white cast, but you definitely don't need to worry about that. It's just you applying a lot of the product on at once, and this is a chemical filtered sunscreen. So all I do is just keep gliding it on and keep lightly rubbing it in, and then eventually that little bit of whiteness will go away. The overall finish of it is quite shiny and very moisturized. The shine can eventually fade depending what environment you're in, but most of the time there is a subtle glow on your face. For instant results, my skin does feel nice and smooth and it looks more moisturized. For long-term results, obviously you're getting sun protection. However, I have noticed that when I wear the sunscreen, particularly when I have a base of foundation on, that my skin tends to dry out a little bit faster. Otherwise, if I just wear this on its own with some concealer on my face, I do not get that at all. For my final thoughts on Beat the Sun SPF 40 PA4 Plus is that it is definitely a cosmetically elegant sunscreen. I do enjoy applying this product on my face and I also like the fact that they're using more modern photostable filters. And from the ingredients list, I noticed that alcohol is in the top five ingredients. However, even with that, I've never experienced that this has dried out my skin significantly. It's just the times when I would wear foundation. So some of the cons I do have with this product is that there are some days when this does sting my face and I feel like it could be because I used a chemical exfoliator the night before. And for the second con, it is something that they have addressed on their website, and it is the fact that this does have alcohol in it. I know alcohol plays a role in stabilizing the filters as well as making it the texture that it is. And she obviously included other good ingredients in here to counteract the fact that there's alcohol in it. And for the most part, I don't find this overly drying. For my skin, however, I've always noticed that anytime a skincare product has alcohol within the top five of the ingredients list, my skin looks weaker. And it's not to say with a one-time use, it's usually with a very consistent use, like using it for a couple of weeks daily. I do like the sunscreen a lot though, so I do make it work by using this every other day to a couple of times a week in rotation with the other sunscreens that I have in my collection. I really do like this sunscreen, I really recommend it. So despite the alcohol in the top five ingredients list, I want to make it work. And I do have one point for the in-between feel, so neither a pro or a con, and that is the size. I find this a perfect size to just throw in your purse, especially when you're going to be outside for a while and touch up throughout the day or if you're traveling. However, I really do wish they came out with a bigger size of this product. This retails for 20 US dollars and I will pay more for a larger size just to get a better quantity of the product. For me, it's not a big deal because I do have a rotation of sunscreens, but for those of you that just want to buy the one sunscreen and use it on a daily basis, you might run out of this pretty quickly. And there you have it. That is my review and experience with Crave Beauty's Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser, their Kale Lalu Yaha, and their Beat the Sun SPF 47 PA4+. Overall, when it comes to Crave Beauty skincare, it's definitely a brand that I would not only purchase all these products again, but would 
repurchase and definitely be excited to trying out any of the new products they come out with in the future. One of the biggest pros from this brand is the fact that their formulations are so good and very thought out. Aside from their key ingredients, if you just look at their ingredients list as a whole, you'll notice that a lot of them are very beneficial. And I really love that it makes up the bulk of the formulation. The second overall pro of Crave Beauty is that I actually find the brand fairly affordable. It's not drugstore price, but it's definitely not like crazy high-end price like what you'd find at Sephora. With the price, you're getting a fairly good size, but I would say overall, you're getting a great formulated product and you only need a little bit with most of these products to go a long way. And by with most of them, obviously I mean the sunscreen is the only exception where you need to apply a specific amount to get the required SPF and PA protection. And the third biggest pro for Crave Beauty is the fact that Leah, the founder, actually uses her products. When you think about it, she did create these products with her skin type in mind, which is sensitive, acne prone, and oily skin. So if she created products that don't work for her skin type, imagine how that reflects about the company in general. I personally find it a pro that she uses her products because then that way she is putting herself out there to see her skin's progress and whether or not using her products are effective. So despite it being a marketing tactic, I still think it's a good one because if you're someone who doesn't use your products all the time, what was the point of you making it in the first place? All right, so if I were to give Crave Beauty a one con, I think a bunch of us know what it is. It is that it is not available internationally. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these products are only available to those living in the US and South Korea. I think it's because they only want to sell directly from their website, so they're probably trying to figure out how to make it an affordable shipping option for those of you in Canada, Europe, Southeast Asia, all those other places. I would like to point out to Crave Beauty though that their New Jersey warehouse is only less than a day's drive to Canada, to Toronto in particular. So Crave Beauty, just so you know, Toronto is only a hour and a half flight. It's only an eight hour or so drive. Tina Sorb is allowed as a UV filter over the counter. So yeah, we are definitely ready to buy your products. Well, I am definitely ready to buy your products. So just think about it. And for my last major points about Crave Beauty, they are the in-between feel. So they are neither pros or cons about them. And the main point basically is that I find their products suitable for most skin types. Like I mentioned earlier with the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser, even though it cleansed my skin really nicely, made it feel really nice and soft, it was drying out my skin very fast and it had to make me use my humectants really fast. The handful of times when I did let that sit on my skin on its own and let my skin dry out, my skin was very shiny and very squeaky clean. Also I find with Beat the Sun for me, with my normal to dry skin type, I definitely don't mind the glow, but for those of you with super oily skin, I could see you not like the texture of this product at all. But again, with my point, even though I said it works for most skin types, the thing is you could still make them work. Like for this, it's just a matter of maybe setting it with powder. I don't usually recommend this often as part of your skincare, but if you are someone who's super oily and you live in a very humid country, you might be able to get away with this as your moisturizer. I know for me personally, when I'm in a super humid country, I don't even touch moisturizer. The thought of it just makes my face feel congested. So for those of you in very humid environments or you have super oily skin, try excluding your moisturizer when you use this product and see how your skin reacts to it then and whether or not it's still super shiny. And that is it for my review of Crave Beauty and their skincare products. I really hope that you did find this review helpful and informative and if it makes you excited or not about trying Crave Beauty products. Despite mentioning a couple of cons in their products, for the most part, I found they worked really well in my skincare routine and none of that ever seemed to be a big deal. They have definitely benefited my skin and contributed to my skin's health way more than what the cons can bring. I'm really enjoying all the products of theirs that I'm using right now, but there is something about the Great Barrier Relief that I find is super special, especially because it does include Tamino oil. I never really hear a lot of people talk about it. Leah's one of the only few that does, so I'm really excited to see how it works for other people. Aside from that though, if you are able to purchase Crave Beauty and you weren't sure if it was going to work with your skin, I really do hope my video and review helps you out in deciding whether or not this is something worth investing in. As always, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel down below, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I will see you all soon. Ciao!